In this video, we're going to have a look at how to install the mini cart, how to format the content of the mini cart to show you how that works. We're going to add some products to our mini cart. And you'll see that as they get added, the total number of items is updated. And when I select the cart, the three items that I've selected is clearly visible. And should I no longer wish to keep those items in the cart, I can simply remove them. So that's how the mini cart works, and all these elements can be styled. Let's head over and see the setup inside the website. So I've installed Oxygen, Oxy Extras, as well as the Oxygen elements for WooCommerce, and of course WooCommerce. And if I head over to Oxygen, and I head over to Oxy Extras, you'll see that we're going to add the cart counter. We need to have that available and also the mini cart. So with those items installed and selected, we head over to Oxygen, and we're now going to install that mini cart here in the top right-hand corner as we had it in the demo. So I'm going to save that. Now when I refresh the page, you'll see the mini cart is no longer available. And now we're going to install the mini cart. So we'll just add it inside this wrapper that the menu is in. And to get started, then we head over to add, we head over to Oxy Extras. And the first thing that we're going to add is the cart counter. There you can see the cart counter displayed, and then we're going to install the mini cart. So now the mini cart has been added. The nice thing about the setup is if I click on that particular item, you'll see that the pop up for the cart actually appears. To make development a little bit easier here in the back end, let's head over to the website and let's add some items to the cart. We'll refresh that page. And you'll see that those items have been added. If I click on there, you'll see those two items. We head over here to oxygen and there you can see the two items that were added. So very nice and very interactive, very dynamic. Now let's get started on the formatting. So there are two parts to this. The one is the mini cart and the other is the cart counter. So let's go and have a look at the cart counter first. Here we can set the cart icon and we have the default icon is the shopping bag. Let's say we wanted to add a shopping cart. So in Font Awesome, We've had a look, done a search for the cart. If we wanted to try a different cart, we can, of course, choose any one of those. But let's go with that shopping cart. And in order for the shopping cart icon to appear, we'll hit apply. And the icon is applied. And now we can, of course, make the icon any size that we want. So let's make it nice and big. The second component to the shopping cart the mini cart, we have the cart icon. Let's have a look at the cart count. So let's make that font size 20, so it's nice and big. And you'll see here that we have the counter size. At the moment, the font size and counter size is the same. So let's up that. And there we have a nice circular count. But let's say we wanted to make that square. Now, the border radius here is set to 100. But even if I make that zero, my counter will still be in a circle. So in order to do that, we'll head over to borders and we'll change the border radius here to, let's make it four. And there you can see now that I have a square for the number of items in the cart. What we're also then going to do is we also want to include some space here between the two items. they very close at the moment. We can do that by heading over to the spacing and bear in mind that we are now in the cart counter. So we'll head over to spacing and on the left hand side put in a margin of let's make that 10. So now we have it nicely evenly spaced for my cart counter. So with that in place let's go move on to the next thing and the next thing that we would want to have a look at is the mini cart. The mini cart at the moment is a little bit narrow. I want to make it a bit wider. Now we don't make the cart counter, the mini cart wider. We actually go to the 
cart counter and we go to the drop down content and this is where we'll set the width then of the drop down content so let's make that 450 pixels and we'll see that's much nicer much wider much easier to to see having that extra space and let's add a shadow then to the drop down and let's make that shadow color black we can set the horizontal offset let's make that zero the vertical offset let's make that three and the shadow blur let's make that 10. so there we have our shadow and if we wanted to we could maybe push that to five so there we have our content in a with a drop shadow border and if we wanted to make these corners round we can do that by heading over to the borders and changing the border radius let's make that five and there we have a nice cart with the borders nicely rounded and head over to the website refresh the page and you'll see that those changes have been applied and that looks a lot better so what we can also do if we're not happy with the the fade in effect is we can also change the fade duration um, if we wanted to take a long time to fade in we can up there or we can leave it on the default of 0.3 and that's where we can set the fade in so there we've set the fade in the width and we don't need to worry here about the maximum width so that was very nicely done very easily done if we wanted to change the position we can do that simply here we can change that to a zero so if our cart was on the left hand side of our page by moving that position on the left to a zero the cart then flips in the other direction if i wanted to move the position of the box and you'll see here that it's it's very close to the bottom of the the window has so if i go to the bottom and i select 20 it actually moves it 20 pixels above the bottom so the reference is from the bottom but if i wanted to appear below a little bit further below what i would do is i'd go to the top reference and you'll see if i put in 20 it's halfway through the box and if i make it 50 it actually moves down a little bit below the box so now i have a little bit of space between my counter and the mini cart so that is just a little bit more comfortable and a little bit easier on the eye to style the content within the mini cart we head over to the mini cart itself and here we can start looking at the various items inside our cart so we have the actual items in the mini cart and we can set the item spacing if i wanted to i could increase the padding so you'll notice here that the space indents there by 10 pixels and likewise on the right hand side i could do the same thing and indent by 10 pixels if i head over to the typography i can of course change the quantity size you can see you can make that uh, pretty much any size that you want so let's leave that at um, 16 so the quantity size is at 16 and then I can also change the price size if I wanted to make that a little bit bigger let's leave that at 18 and then of course if I go back here I can head over to uh, some borders so if I wanted to add a border let's have a look at what that would look like i can add a border make that solid and you'll see how the border appears so let's just hit solid there and let's make the border with one and let's make the color something lighter so if i wanted to have a border this is where i could place a border then around each item which does um, add a, a, a slight effect to what we have here. Um, personally, I prefer not to have a border around the item. So let's just go back to the cart items, head over to borders, and we'll 
unset all the borders. What we will probably want to do is have just the bottom border here between the two items just to uh, differentiate between them in the list. So we'll go to just the bottom and there we have our border. If we're not happy with the spacing, we can head back over here to item spacing and we can change that to a zero and change that to a 20 or reduce that to the size. So there we've been able to adjust the spacing. And what we can also do is then go and adjust the size of the image. So if we're not happy with the size of the product image, simply come in here and we can make that image as big as we would like. So maybe we wanna make it slightly bigger. We can do something like that. And if we wanted to, we can also maybe add a border on the image, just make it a little bit more attractive. And here we can set the margin around the image. So that's how we can change the size of the image. The remove icon is not to remove the icon, but that is actually the icon size of the icon here to remove the product. So that's a little bit small, especially if you're looking at it on mobile. So let's make that a little bit bigger. And I think that works. And we can also have a look here then at the spacing. And if we're not happy with the spacing on the right hand side, maybe what we wanna do is just bring that in a little bit. So by changing the margin, we can bring that close button in a little bit to the left hand side. So there we have the close button slightly uh, larger. And now what we can do is have a look at the button. So nice thing about the buttons is here we have the flex direction. I'm uh, pretty sure that the row is going to be the, the nicer one on the eye. Here we can set the button width, but let's leave it at default. And here we can set the button spacing. If we wanted to make slightly bigger buttons, we can up that value and you'll see that we can have really big buttons, but I think in this case, we'll just leave it as at the default size. And the border radius, we'll leave that at the default size as well. And here you can style the individual buttons. So the view cart button, maybe what we wanna do there is have a background color. Let's make that orange and the text color white. Uh, the hover background color, let's make it red. So when you hover over, it will flash over to red. And then the checkout button, let's make the background color there red. And the hover background, let's just make that a deeper red. So you'll see that button hover over, deeper red, and the orange changes to red. Right, you can also style the text color. You can also change the border hover, box shadows, um, the box shadow hover. So if we, for example, maybe we want to highlight the checkout button a little bit more. So let's, you'll see that we're here looking at the checkout button. So let's head over to the um, box shadow and let's give that a box shadow value. Uh, no, let's give that a vertical offset of five and let's make that shadow blue 10. So there you can see we've highlighted that button and it just stands out a little, a little bit more than the view card button. So making it a little bit easier for somebody to get to the checkout. Here we can change the cart total details. Maybe what we want to do is make the amount slightly larger. So let's make that 20. And let's give that font weight 500. So there we can make our price slightly larger. And if we wanted to, to change the subtotal value, we can do the same thing. So there we would head over to the um, card total and go to the title and change the font size there. So let's make that 20 as well. So that's how we can change that 
that value. So there we have some other options as well. Uh, if you wanted to add a border, we could add a border. But in this case, we'll leave it a default. If we wanted to add the border, it would look something like that. And then you could also come into spacing and maybe apply the spacing. Get back to borders and you could make that apply. Uh, make the border with one and make the border color. A light gray. So that could add another dimension then to our uh, checkout. Right, so we have styled that mini cart nicely. Let's see. Let's head back to the mini cart and we've done the cart total. And then we also have the inner layout. If you wanted to change the inner layout, if you wanted something more horizontal across your page, you could look at changing that and then of course you can change the buttons to also appear one under the other but let's leave it like that hit save and now when we navigate to the front end of the website we refresh and we can see here that the cart has now been updated and there we have our mini cart so very easy to set up and style let's have a look at that in the mobile view Head over back to oxygen and let's go to less than 768 pixels. And immediately we see that we have a problem because it flies out to the left hand side, that's not going to work on the mobile view. Let's then go to our drop down content and you'll see that if we look at the positions available, there's no position here for the button to be in the center. It's either the left or to the right hand side. Now, the right is from the right hand side of, of that item. So if I go zero, you'll see it'll stay where it is. And if I go 50, it moves 50 to the left hand side. And the same would apply to the left. So what we need to do then is have a look at how we're going to position that. Now, the other thing that because it's gonna be on mobile, maybe what we wanna do is make it slightly narrower. So we'll set that to a slightly narrower width and we'll head over to position and then what I'm going to do, uh, you can work on percentage, you can work on the width of the viewport or we can also work on a percentage and as we click you'll see that we're able to then move it around. So if we worked on percentage and we, we can now uh, move that, position that in the middle and if we then go one size smaller and you'll see that that still fits inside the item. If we head over to the front end to the mobile view and, and now when we click on the button you'll see that we have it nice and neat in the middle and That will remove, and if we want to add an item, let's add to cart, and it adds to cart, and we can open, and there we have our item. So that's how easy it is then to add the mini cart to our website. I hope you enjoyed that video, and thank you for watching.